so what we're going to talk about today is the creation of digital content online for science here at the museum. So what are we going to try and cover? We are going to cut, we'll be describing what's involved in creating digital applications and the technology behind them and then showing some examples of digital projects that we've created in collaboration with science and then we'll end by outlining who's involved in producing that digital content now, like where they live in the museum now. Okay. And we're going to be swapping over each slide, as you can see. So just a few words about um, our general approach. This slide's really uh, just to demonstrate some of the capabilities we've got and how the three main areas of expertise of, of design, content, technology uh, need to come together for us to uh, produce digital content. As the main things I want to say about this really are that um, those three things do have to come together and we work best when they are they have come together in a team and these uh, three inputs from these different areas have to work continuously throughout the project life cycle whether it's if we're working iteratively on solving a problem or creating a new feature um, the, these three areas always always work together um, other aspects on to Lucy? Okay. So with digital design, uh, we there are two aspects that we look at with digital design. The first is user experience design, and that involves defining the audience, their behavior, user journeys. The information is then used to create wireframes that show where the information will sit on the site and how that functionality will work. So if you want to search for something, how many items will you return, if you've got masses of items, how are you going to then filter that search to find other things. Um, on the top right we have an example of a wireframe which is for the collections level description project and that's showing where the collections information would sit in, on the website, where you would link out to other things, how you'd get return to the search. So that's, that's the sort of thing we're talking about. That prototype would then be shown to the actual users to make sure that it makes sense to them so they would effectively test that design. Once the user experience design has been done, then you move on to the visual design layouts, user interfaces and graphic interfaces. Um, and we've got two examples here of visual design. One is the Wallace Letters online landing page and the other one is a Wallace timeline interface which both are showing the layout and then the user interfaces which is essentially where you would click through to somewhere else where there's a button to bring up another window where where the sort of functionality lives on the page okay I uh, just to introduce some of the uh, technical considerations um, and technical aspects we think about when making um, building these projects uh, as well as the uh, coding and software development um, we have to put uh, thinking into the overall software architecture and platform used, whether there's any integrations with existing data sources or other systems or content management frameworks, for example. Um, we work a lot with data, so sometimes that's creating data sources from scratch or using um, science, uh, science group data sets or manipulating those to and optimize, optimizing those for best use on the web. Um, we also think uh, bit more about the long-term support and up, update needs for uh, digital applications online and um, a key part of this is getting the technical specifications the technic technical requirements right up front also so this can involve some in-depth analysis or feasibility work before we actually start the technical build and then there's the actual digital content um, as you all know that involves compiling generally an awful lot of data and bringing it together in a database. Um, in other areas it involves writing text, sourcing images, editing all of those for digital platforms. It also includes social media and video production. All of that content is then uploaded either into a database or a content management system which is an app so then the application surfaces that data to the digital platform be that the website, a mobile, a gallery kiosk. Uh, 
Um, which what I've shown here is the Wallace 100 um, web page, which essentially highlights the variety of digital content that is created in house. And first, firstly, you just see here. Here you've got the main promotion towards the uh, Wallace Letters Online. So as George described it earlier, um, a huge amount of data brought, compiled by his team um, and assembled in a database. Um, then there are accompanying web pages about Wallace and about his collections. Um, there's also, uh, social media, George's blog is pulled in, and up here we have a Bill Bailey video where he describes his uh, interest in Wallace, and all, again, all of these things done in-house. Um, and finally, just at the bottom, it, that also ties into the gallery Wallace Trails, um, which where, is where you'll find the um, gallery kiosk of Wallace Timeline, a digital kiosk. Um, so continuing with uh, Wallace Letters Online, which we talked about a bit today, um, some of the more technical aspects of this project, uh, where well, there was a considerable amount of work on preparing the database. Uh, there's an existing database already, but preparing that for efficient use online so we could search the collection efficiently. Um, we did some work creating a separate tool that could ingest the transcribed letters themselves, get that data into the database, and produce uh, downloadable PDFs also. Um, just We don't have time to talk about many of our projects today, uh, but another one I wanted to mention is the eBeak uh, website. This uh, presents uh, information about bird co European bird collections online. Um, this involved creating a data source from scratch, from a uh, database from scratch from existing documents. Uh, we worked um, a lot on the uh, data retrieval and data presentation interfaces, uh, and we were able to reuse components and ideas uh, similar to what we've looked at in Wallace Letters projects, as well as some of the things we're talking about with collections level descriptions. Um, another key feature about this project, as you can see on the right, there's a mobile uh, friendly version of this website. And so as this is one of our first dynamic database websites to have the mobile-friendly version. So as Ailsa mentioned earlier, uh, over 30% of our online visitors are now using uh, mobile or tablet devices. So this now needs to be built into all our new development projects as, as standard practice. OK. Um, a few other case studies, uh, just to mention the Open Assistant Science Surveys nature groups near you, and we're also currently working on a mobile web application, but on the content for the mobile web application, Leaf Snap UK. Right, uh, final word is just um, a quick note on the current uh, restructuring. So uh, as of today, Lucy and I uh, still work in the same room, uh, but uh, recent restructures have, have put uh, the technical development team working within ICT. So just to say that um, the processes as we've described today will remain largely the same and we'll continue working very closely together with both science group and um, content and technical development across the groups. Okay. And then, <clears throat> yeah, just to say that the content, most of the digital content that doesn't come from you comes from the content de department, as it's now called in PEG, and that is content editorial, which is headed by Sheila Sang and content design by Ben Rakerson and content development by Louise Bitten. Okay, that's kind of